Now, I've talked about the changes that occur in the body, right? But the reason, um, but what I, the reason I talked about the body was to give you a precursor to understand that when the, there are these changes that happen in the body, but there are parallel changes that happen in our mind, in our thinking styles, in the lenses that we view the world from, in our focus, in our vision, and exactly in the same way we have a normal state. So use this as an analogy, like the physical body, we have a normal way of functioning and then we'll have the stress mode. What happens in the stress function? So let's go back to the same example that I narrated where Amit sees the tiger and he runs away and I see the tiger and I'm still analyzing it and I don't. And let's see what are the changes, right? What were the changes in Amit's thinking styles, in his lens, in his worldviews, in his ways of processing information that enabled him to run away from the tiger, which would not have happened in my case, right? So the first thing, first thing that helped him, right, uh, was the bush was shaking, but he reached a snapped judgment. That is a tiger, right? That's, that's perceived threat is real enough, I'm going to run from it, black and white thinking. I was using very nuanced thinking and all that. So um, when, when we are in the stressed mode, nuanced, integrated thinking, which is very valuable at other times, especially if you're a manager in the knowledge economy, can, uh, is, is, is not helpful, right? So when you're in a stressed state, the mind automatically switches over to very rudimentary black and white kind of thinking. Judgmental thinking, yes. What else? Okay, focus thinking. So we talked about bounded awareness. We've talked about bounded awareness in the previous section. Um, what is bounded awareness? It's also the ability to focus, to pay attention and to be aware of certain stimuli in the environment, certain objects and not everything else, not give equal attention to everything. So bounded awareness becomes even more bounded, which means your focus becomes even more focused when we are under stress, right? So Amit was thinking about the tiger and only the tiger and he ran. I probably, and, and did that help him? Was that functional? Absolutely. What would I have been doing? I was thinking of the tiger, but I was also thinking of various possibilities. It could be a stuffed toy, it could be so many other things. I'm still looking at several other things. Normally, I might be someone who's a poet, and I am a poet, so you know, I might walk into a jungle, hey, nice rainbow, bluebird, what a lovely day, beautiful flowers, look at everything else. But, it, but when I'm under threat, is that functional? Is it functional for me to have such a broad, open-minded vision? No, it's functional for me to think about the tiger and only the tiger and run away. So our focus, our vision actually gets very narrow, which in the long run, yeah, just like when you suppress systems in the long run, it may not be very functional, but when you're under stress, it can absolutely be functional. And and that's and that's that's what that's the way nature designed it, and I think it's a good design. What are some of the other changes that happen? So we talked about a lens, right? Uh, the lens through which we all look at the world. So I also teach positive, positive psychology. And in positive psychology, we found again and again how it's actually useful to look at the world through rose-tinted glasses normally. Optimists do better. They, have, they show much better results, they show better longevity, better health, lots of benefits to being an optimist. What's, who's an optimist? Who looks at the world through rose-tinted glasses. So if there is mixed signals, you see, you interpret it in the best possible way. You see the glasses half full rather than half empty. But come back to the tiger scenario. Now let's say Amit sees the tiger and he's running away, okay? He's running away. And somewhere else he sees another bush shaking. Just a bush shaking, nothing else, okay? Neutral signals can be interpreted in their multiple ways. Can be interpreted, oh, there's a cute rabbit hiding there. Oh, let's see what's happening. Oh, maybe somebody needs my help. Or it could be a tiger. In this particular case, when he's already running from a tiger, what's, what's going to be the most useful interpretation for Amit? Bingo, that, oh, this could be another tiger, run away, or this could be the same tiger. So interpreting neutral signals as, in the worst possible case, the glass is half empty, okay, that is functional, that helps, and yes, and nature thought of that. 
So nature actually, when we're stressed, the way our lenses shift, we start looking at the world with distrust, with skepticism, with doubt, you know, sort of, um, sort of imagining the worst case in each, in each person, in each thing that happened. And that was designed to help us escape, to keep us safe. Let's look at something else, right? Another thing that helped Amit to escape. So, the impulsiveness. You have to, to make very impulsive decisions. It's not something that we always want to do as managers. We don't, want, we don't think of impulsiveness or necessarily as a good trait. But in the situation when you're running away from the tiger, can it be useful? Absolutely. It needs to make impulsive judgments and decisions. And yes, the mind does become more impulsive when we are, and it's the same hormones that actually do that, right? When we are in the stressed state. Let's look at yet another thing. The ability to be okay with uncertainty. So you have this all over in the leadership space, right? Great managers, great leaders need to be able to embrace uncertainty. We need to be able to stay, stay with the, you know, stay with the problem, stay with the solution, stay with the fear. Don't have, don't have to rush to bring closure to events, but explore things. Yes, these, these are very good traits, very valuable traits for a leader, for a manager, but when we're faced with imminent danger, what helps? What helped Amit escape? There was a spike in the need to bring closure to this thing. He doesn't want to stay on and figure out, is it a tiger, is it not? Could it be a tiger? No, no. It could be this, it could be that. No, I need to reach closure. I need to, so it, it is and I'm running away. Need for control, I need to be safe. So the spike in a need for control, spike in a need to bring closure to the uncertainty and whatever is bothering. These, this gets triggered as well when we are in a stressed state. Um, other changes, there are set, uh, a few other changes, but I'm just going to mention one more right here and then we'll uh, go back to doing the analogy on you know, temporary versus permanent. Um, about the big picture, again something we hear a lot about in management, right? In leadership. We want to be able to see the big picture. We don't want to lose the big picture. It actually helped Amit when he's escaping from the tiger to not look at the big picture but look at just the problem that's bothering him. So what can be functional for escaping from an imminent threat can actually be a mode and, and right now I'm not talking about the body but I'm talking the mind. It may not be the mode in which you want your mind to continuously operate if you are a manager, you are a leader or you're just working, right? <laughs> you're, you're, even if you're just a normal human being interacting with others. Um, let's, let's take a look at some of these things a little closely. Suppose, suppose I'm hiring someone, okay, for a job. I'm a manager and I'm hiring someone and I hire this person because, you know what, this person is a very integrative thinker. He can think nuancedly, he sees the several shades of grey, he doesn't, he doesn't reach snap judgments, impulsive decisions, he can look at the big picture. I also hire this person because he's very cheerful and positive, he looks at the world, he, he's, he was very optimistic and you know the other interviewers thought as well and we hired someone who's optimistic, who can see the big picture, who can have nuanced thinking and then once this person joins us, we just throw this person with so much work or we create so much worry and for some, you know, we just ramp up the stress levels in our organization and this person you know, starts being very stressed and working under stress. And when he's under stress, what kind of a person do I see on my work in my workplace? I see someone who is who's looking at, who's misinterpreting what his colleagues and other people are saying. We give him, we, we I sent out a neutral email, and he misinterpreted it. He he saw it as an attack. Why would he do that? Because when we're stressed, we have a lens which tends to interpret things in the worst case, way possible. Right? So his natural optimism is not showing up. What's showing up is someone who's misinterpreting things, who's, who's, who's feeling threatened, who's being defensive, who's not seeing the big picture, who's being very narrow-minded, who's being judgmental, who's being impulsive, who seems not okay with dealing with uncertainty but we're going through such, such a time of flux and change. What happened to the gem that I hired? Well, 
That gem is still a gem, but the gem is operating in a stressed mode. May not be the kind of work, may not be suited for <laughs> working ideally, right? So you want the gem to operate in a non-stress mode for, for as much as possible. And yes, perhaps, yeah, we would, stress is quite inevitable, we get stressed, but let's also be able to operate for as long as possible in the normal mode, which is efficient and effective.